Here we will discuss how to calculate the cumulative incidence. In epidemiology, there are three main measures of disease frequency. The prevalence, cumulative incidence and incidence rate. In prevalence, that is a calculation of all the existing cases at a time point divided by the total population at that time point. Cumulative incidence looks at the total number of new cases during a time period divided by the total population at risk at the start of that time period. Population at risk is defined by all those are susceptible for a given disease. And incidence rate is similar to cumulative incidence looking at all the new cases during a time period but here, we're looking at person time, so seeing how much every individual contributed towards that uh, study period. So let's go ahead and look at our data set and see how we can calculate the cumulative incidence for the counties that we have selected in our study of COVID-19. This is the data set that I have shared with students previously. We looked at 30 of the most populated counties in the United States and categorized them into three groups depending upon the cumulative incidence at a given date. We also have a second data set where we are looking at four different states and looking at the most 10 most populated counties in each of those states to try to identify patterns of COVID-19 spread. So let's use a data set that we have and see how we can draw a certain cumulative incidence graph. So this is an, a final product, an example of what we would like to achieve and I will take you through this step by step. Looking here we have uh, several tabs where we have the cumulative cases. So these are all the cases that were reported by John Hopkins University and this is uh, during the selected time period for our study. Cumulative incidence was calculated by taking the cumulative number of cases divided by the total population at risk. So since our cumulative cases or cumulative incidence is for the entire period of our study, the total population of each of the counties will be used as the total population at risk. So let's go ahead and look at our uh, cumulative cases tab where we will see all the cases that occurred during the study period all the way through the 10th of Similarly, we have calculated the cumulative incidence, taking the cumulative cases, dividing them by the total population and multiplying them by 10,000 so that we can find the cumulative incidence per 10,000 of the population. So let's go ahead and see if we can plot the data for the first 10 counties given right here. So to do that, uh, what you need to do is to select the data set that we want to plot. So this will be the first 10 counties, highlight the entire region, and we will go to insert, and we will plot a scatter plot with lines joining them. So once we have the scatter plot, uh, I like to go ahead and open this in a new window. So we will move our chart and we will name this um, incidence, cumulative incidence plot. And that will be open somewhere. So right now we'll just keep it right here. So as you can see, the, the plot given here is using the same data set that was used in this particular plot but it looks very different. So what we'll do is we'll make certain changes so that it will look like 
this particular graph given here. So one of the first things I like to do is just highlight the graph and change some of the fonts, change some of the formatting here. So we will use Arial, we will increase the font to 28, we will then make everything bold, we will make the text black. That's a good start. We will now go ahead and delete the grid so it's less there is less clutter then we will select the axis right click go to format axis and here we will uh, use the line and we will have a solid line in black have it at three points we'll do the same thing for the x-axis three-point axis in black. We will also add some uh, uh, some tick marks as well. So we will use the tick mark option and have some tick marks to indicate that. We'll do the same thing for the y-axis right there. So as you can see there is a lot of clutter on the x-axis and the legend given here is down here as well. So we will get the legend to float at the top right hand corner. To do that, you will go to design, add chart element, go to legend, and here we will go to more legend options and we will have it to overlap in the chart and bring it to the top right. So then we can move this to the location we would like to have it in. Bring it up a little bit higher. And as you can see, the series does not have any names. So let's go ahead and add each of the names to these graphs. So you right click, you go to select data. And at that point, you see all the series are labeled here. So we'll select them individually, go to edit. And when it comes to the series name, we will go to each of the counties and add their uh, county name. Here we are using a four letter code for each of the counties. Two letters from the county and two letters for the state. And we'll do the same thing for each of them. Now that we have the legend over here, we can make it slightly smaller. If the font size seems to be slightly large, we can reduce the font size to about 24 as well. And then we can bring it up a little bit more. So that's something that we can adjust as needed. For right now, we'll keep it at the top right hand corner. Now, as we can see, all the dates are overlapping. So if we go to the x-axis, select the dates, and go to the category number, and you'll be able to choose what type of format we will like the date in. So we are going to select just the month and the day. And our graphs, uh, since we have so much of uh, points right here, that are not really having any values, we can start the graph around the 1st of March. So let's go ahead and take care of that as well. Right now our graph is starting uh, February 19th. Let's see if we can change this 
to the 1st of March. So that's like 11 days from the 19th. So if we add 11 days to the minimum value, around 91, we will see our graph now starts at 3, 1. Then we will also go ahead and have our graph to be labeled every two weeks, so every 14 days. And at that point we see uh, the 1st of March, 15th, 29th, and so on. So our study period, as we're showing on this graph, will be from the 1st of March to the 10th of May. Now that we did that, let's go ahead and label our x and y axes. To do that, you go to Design, Add Chart Element, Axis Titles, Primary Horizontal Title, and a Vertical Title. Our x-axis will be the date. And the y-axis will be um, Cumulative Incidents per 10,000 individuals. So that will be our y-axis. Then we have this decimal point which is not needed. So let's go ahead and remove the decimal point. To do that go to numbers and at that you can mark the decimal point as a zero. And we can also get rid of this border when it comes to the graph as we don't need it for our graph. To do that go to format, shape outline and no outline. And as you can see, the graph is much more cleaner. We can also give a title to our graph. We will say this is going to be the cumulative incidence. And in this case, we will also call it group 1, since we have three groups for the comparison. The next thing we will do is we will get rid of these, um, these uh, the plot markers and increase the thickness of each of these lines and give it a color scheme so that we will be able to differentiate them easily. So the system I'm going to use here is for the first five counties, we will give solid lines. For the next five counties, we will give uh, dotted lines. And we will get rid of all these markers. So let's select the first plot, which is the BRNY plot, and we go right here, markers, we are going to get rid of the markers, no markers for the line. We will make this color red, and we will make the thickness a 3.5. Then we will go to the next one, we will make that color blue, thickness a 3.5, Markers, no markers. The next one, right here, we will markers, take get rid of the markers, the line color here, we will make it orange. Thickness at 3.5. And we will do for the rest of them as well. The next one, we will use purple color. 3.5 and remove the markers. The next one we will make it a grey color line. The reason I use these particular colors is to bring out the contrast in them. Uh, I like to refer to this color wheel looking at contrasting and complementing colors. So colors that are opposite in this wheel tend to contrast with each other. So as you might have seen, I used uh, red, I used blue, purple, orange. Instead of yellow, I used gray since it's a little bit of a better contrast. We can see it a little bit better. And I avoid the use of green due to the issue of some individuals being colorblind 
and not being able to differentiate between green and red. So that's why we use uh, red, blue, orange, purple, and gray. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other five lines we have and make them dotted lines. Okay. So as you can see, we have done certain modifications from how the graph started out to give it a better contrast to the way it's looking right now. Let me bring this just a little bit to the side so that they are not connected there. As you can see, this is very similar to the graph that I showed when we started out. Um, yes, the only other difference is a little bit about the x-axis. So let me see here. So cumulative incidence, here we are showing it for 100,000. I like to have these graphs with numbers 100 or less. To be able to do that, we will go in here and we will multiply these numbers by 10 or divide them by 10. To do that, you can select the axis, format axis, and here the display units, we will change it to uh, a 10, so in 10 times. And we don't need the label. So as you can see, we divided everything by 10. Therefore, we will increase our axis to 100,000 in here. And then we can even bring our axis to use the entire space of the graph. To do that, you can go to Design, Chart Element, Chart Title, we will make it an overlay. So now looking at this graph, we see it is very similar to the final product we have here. And of course, this axis, our highest point goes only to about 29. So we don't have to go all the way to 35. We can even adjust this further by going to format axis. The maximum, we can keep it at 300. And our major units, we can even keep them at a Hundred, so that we our x y axis is not as crowded as well. So now, as you can see, they are very similar to each other. This is how we can plot our cumulative incidence graph using using the data set that I have provided for students. So finally, uh, our goal is to prepare graphs that are going to be publication quality. And this is what it would look like when we start preparing some figures. So this is the exact graph that we work together plotting. And a similar graph created for our second group and even a third group. So having them side by side, we will be able to compare and see some differences and some similarities here. Similarly, we are also looking at the four different states, California, Florida, Texas, and New York, and we will also be able to do the cumulative incidence graphs for them and look at them side by side to see how we can compare the spread of COVID-19 in different states.